Hello, everyone. So the alcohol's flew, flowing freely, so I expect a good round of applause at the end of this. Um, we'll make a start. So I guess society is changing rapidly, and at Volvo Group, we're determined to be a, a positive force in this change. We're fully committed to decarbonisation of transport and delivering fossil-free solutions for our customers, and we also strive to do that within our own operations as well. I just wanted to briefly share how we see the path towards decarbonisation, and it spans three areas really. One, electrification, two, collaboration, and three, government support. There's a clear time frame on this, um, and that frame is set by the climate. To halt the climate crisis by 2050, we need to limit global warming to below two degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial levels. Now, since our products have a lifetime of about 10 years, that means by about 2040, all the vehicles we sell need to be zero tailpipe emission. Now, despite the UK HGVs making up about 6% of road transport, they also account for around 18% of UK transport emissions. So, it's clear to us that one solution won't be enough in this space. We'll need different solutions for different customers as well. And here we pick up the first of that path, and that is that electrification is the key. The majority of the vehicles by 2040 will be electric, and we're going to be offering both battery and fuel cell technology to support that. Now, the exact mix between battery and fuel cell technology is quite hard to predict, but we're convinced that we'll see high volumes for both those technologies. Now, in general, battery electric vehicles are better suited for applications like city distribution and refuse and regional haul, whereas fuel cell technology will probably be more suitable for long haul and heavier applications. But there seems today to be a sharp line between those two technologies. It's also a lot about availability, uh, infrastructure, and also important, the price of green electricity and green hydrogen. The split between battery and fuel cell vehicles will look different in different countries and regions too. We also believe that we'll need combustion engines beyond 2040, but with fossil-free fuels, like biofuels. We're looking into the possibilities of running combustion engines on green hydrogen, uh, and the early technology looks quite promising. But 2040 is the goal. We need to start now, but we feel we're, we're well on the way. We're out early with hybrid buses in 2009, and today we offer full electric solutions across all of our business, including trucks, buses, construction equipment, and engines through Volvo Penta. But the energy efficiency of their ve these vehicles is developing at such a rate now. When we launched our first generation fully electric buses in 2015, the batteries had a capacity of around 50 kilowatt hours. Second generation, 66 kilowatt hours. And now, with the third generation batteries, we're somewhere around 90 kilowatt hours, so it's moving fast. And with innovation in other uh, electromobility components, we today offer fully electric trucks up to 44 tonnes. This rate of development will no doubt increase, and let's be honest, it's, it's going to have to. When it comes to fuel cell electric vehicles, they'll be ready for commercialization probably in the second half of the decade. We need to speed up the production, distribution, and infrastructure needed for green electricity and green hydrogen. And this is a task for all stakeholders. This moves us on to the second path for around collaborations. And there are many great examples of strong collaborations within industry today. A good example is the growth of the LNG network in the UK. This is a result of collaboration between vehicle manufacturers, customers, dealer networks, and gas providers as well. A fantastic team effort, and that model needs to then translate into electrification as well. Further examples include Volvo Group with Daimler Trucks and Tratton, investing in a joint venture called Mylens. That will install and operate at least 1,700 high-performance, green energy charging points for trucks across Europe. And yet another partnership, a collaboration called Cellcentric, that we've created with Daimler Trucks. This will develop and manufacture fuel cell stacks for our two companies and others. 
So industry collaboration is a great start. And here we, we kind of get to the final path, which critically is governments and authorities play a huge and vital role in this transformation we're now in. Because of complexity, it's important government sets a clear direction for us. And this direction needs to be based on the basis of all stakeholders. We need to talk and listen to each other. And these events actually are hugely encouraging to start the conversation. And I know Department for Transport, they consult with many stakeholders as the basis for their proposals and projects, including ourselves. We applaud and appreciate that because we're keen to share the knowledge we have across the industry to benefit all. Government also plays a vital role to speed up the transformation and incentives is one of those examples. Now we were early out in electrification of heavy transport, but the volumes are still very low. But when you look at the hockey stick of growth required, we see greater uptake of electric trucks in countries where incentives to transport companies will cover, for example, the, the high cost of the vehicles, the local infrastructure required as well, and discount on road taxes and tolls. So taxes could be another crucial point to, and powerful tool to equalize the cost between total cost of ownership of diesel versus electric. <clears throat> but to conclude, these are the three paths to decarbonize. We, we feel like we're doing our part towards the Paris Agreement, but we also recognize we will not manage that on our own. We're going to need to work together, and I look forward to hopefully doing that with a number of you in the room today. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Martin. Um, time is against us, so I'll take the liberty of asking the final question of the evening. Again, I'm the host, I'm allowed. If you had one wish for the industry, what would it be? Uh, it would probably be that, I'll probably answer in two parts quickly. One is that um, customers of all shapes and sizes, fleet operators, they think about the power strategy of electric before they think of the trucks, or certainly at the same time timeline or lag between de delivering both is, is so critical but that the two need to work in sync um, and I think the second is just just behaviors there's many customers out there who want to get on the road for, for electrification they're very keen on the technology and we've got the we've obviously got the technology ready and waiting and um, they need some incentive some sort of push to get them to that next level and, and the divide between diesel and electric is just too far apart at the minute for, for, for mass adoption so um, if you could give us some incentives for Christmas, that would be very well received. Incentives. Thank you very much. Another warm round of applause for Martin. Thank you.